Let's talk about rendering variant tokens. So what tokens are good for? Tokens are one of the options that you will see when you try to insert a rendering variant renderer. So you will see the fields that we've talked about, but you will also see this mysterious token thing. Uh, tokens are as much for you as an editor as they are for developers. There are situations where you don't want to render just a field, but you need to do some transformation on uh, on the values that are available in Sitecore items. And tokens allow your developers to provide you with that transformation and integrate it into rendering variant. You're going to get a list of available tokens from your developer. However, those are the tokens that are already in the system. And they are for rendering a size of a media item, a file type icon, an ID of an item, and a name. Why ID and a name? Because those are, while those are properties of your items, those are not available as fields. So if you wanted to render a name of an item, you wouldn't be able to do it just by providing, putting a field renderer with a name. So let's see what those available tokens are. For this, I'm going to drop a media link and I'm going to create a media link item. Let's call it a test file. And I'm going to pick a file that I will be rendering. So I'm going to go into my files and I'm going to pick an Excel file. Now let's save that and let's look at our rendering variant. So this is the rendering variant that's handling what I'm seeing on the page and it renders a file type icon token which allows me to have that nice icon here. It renders the dollar size token which allows me to have this size, however, not just a number, but transferred to a KB or M for kilobytes or MB for megabytes. So it actually provides this in a nicely formatted way. And then I have a dollar ID and dollar name. And those don't really look nice, but sometimes you just need this information rendered, like if you need this for a JavaScript. Uh, and in this case, those tokens can be quite useful for uh, for this purpose. Let's check another file type and let's see how this will look differently. So let's pick a PDF. And save that page. And you can see that we've got the PDF icon a different size, also in KB, and the name as well as the ID. Now let's pick something different. Let's pick an image and let's open the big image that we used in our previous video so that we can see that the size that is in kilobytes after we change and save it, now shows us that the image size is 6.35 megabytes. And we've got a nice image for, uh, for the uh, nice icon for the image. Now, how does this work? And what do your developer need to know to actually implement that? So the token is interpreted in a context of an item that is being rendered. So we went through the reference to the file and we see the date, the size and the, uh, the dollar name. But this is the, the, um, 
uh, this is going through the file field on the data source into the linked file itself. So how is the token integrated? Well, when the token renderer is being, uh, is being rendered, it runs the resolve variant tokens pipeline. And you can see that we've got processors that takes this item uh, that we're actually rendering at the moment, process it and produces the string that can be resolved by your, uh, by your uh, browser. So as a developer, you can look into those classes, see how SXA transforms this item into a useful string and implement your own tokens. That's it about tokens. Thank you.